double eye infections. One of the eyes is completely shield, sealed shut and the other one is grossly infected and sealing shut as we speak. Okay, my darling, I'm gonna close you all up nice and snug so you don't feel afraid of anything. And then we're gonna take you to the doctor and we're gonna get you healed. Here we go, darling, you're okay. Let us help you, okay? You have to be very, very careful when you're handling wild birds. So I held her for as little time as humanly possible to set up the crate. And then we put her in the crate and we put a blanket over the crate so it's nice and dark in there. She's not seeing images that are scaring her. She's not concerned about us walking around. Um, and we're going to put her in the car. We're going to keep the car nice and quiet, no music on. And we're going to drive her to the California Wildlife Center. I think it's really, really important that we articulate our plan, what we're doing and why, so that they can be on board and they have less reason to be afraid. For argument's sake, let's just say she doesn't understand my words. She understands my intention and she understands my energy. We're going to get her in the car. All right, I'm going to pick you up. Okay, little bird, I'm going to put you in the car, darling. Here we go. All right. Hopefully in a week's time, she'll be back at the Gentle Barn flying free. I'm glad we were able to help her. So today is a really exciting day, you guys. Um, Ellie is being presented with an award. Supreme Master Television is out here today at the Gentle Barn. We are presenting Ellie with the Shining World Compassion Award. Um, there's a beautiful plaque to accompany it and an award letter from Supreme Master Ching Hai, as well as a donation in the amount of $10,000. With heartfelt gratitude and best wishes, may heaven forever shield you and those assisting you in your compassionate work. Thank you. You're very welcome. Word from Supreme Master Ching Hai for the Gentle Barn. In recognition of courageous, selfless advocacy for our voiceless animals, rescuing, protecting, sheltering, and nurturing, providing a forever home with compliments and gratitude for your compassionate and benevolent commitment to saving precious animal lives. Presented by the Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association. And uh, accompanying this award letter and the plaque um, is a financial donation that we'd like to make from Supreme Master Ching Hai in the amount of $10,000 to help you continue your noble work and endeavors throughout the world and spreading the good message. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much. I just finished the SMTV interview, which was such an honor to have them here. My God, what an honor. And uh, just when I thought I could go in the house, take a lunch break with Cheyenne, maybe do some reading and homeschooling with her, I just found out that I have a private tour. Forgiveness is that good? Oh, you are so nice and warm. Where did forgiveness come from? In my book, I talk about rescuing our very first group of veal calves uh -huh. and there was six of them that basically were born in a dairy taken away from their moms at birth and put into veal crates where they couldn't move at all and the muscles didn't develop and then sent to slaughter at eight weeks old we brought them in and they were so incredibly sick with pneumonia and staph infections fungus high fevers and runny noses and coughs that it took us seven months to heal them we had volunteers with them all through the day and all through the night so they were never alone. And they sang to them, read books to them, held them in their laps, kissed them and loved them. And slowly, slowly they got better. Isn't he handsome though? And he's such a gentle <laughs> he giant. He's so sweet. You just love this. Hmm. Oh, 
That's so good. He's like, I don't want you to hug me anymore. <laughs> oh my god, I know. He's so soft. So you've been put to work. <laughs> the llama doesn't like being pet, but he likes taking selfies. <laughs> you want to scratch? He loves taking selfies. Pigs in bed. They're so freaking cute. Look at her little hands. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what, Jelly? What? We just got out of a meeting planning our 20th anniversary celebration. We're going to call it Barnyard Ball and it's gonna be in August or September. We're still trying to fine tune the date. But we got together with our marketing team and some other people that are gonna support it. We talked about concept and menu and it's gonna be at the Gentle Barn. We're gonna have lanterns and twinkly lights in the trees. It's gonna be really elegant. We cannot wait. It's gonna be amazing. And you guys are all invited. I'm heading over to Gold's Gym right now for a workout. I'm feeling pretty fatigued, pretty tired. I've eaten pretty good today, but I still feel pretty fatigued. So it's like, you gotta keep walking sometimes, you know? Like, you know, the smells are so good. You're smelling like the Chipotle and the Johnny Rockets and all that. But you just gotta keep going and get over to Gold's and get in the front door and not look back. better than uh, I thought it was gonna be to be honest with you um, did upper body and feel really strong right now but I know I need to go eat some protein and eat some food so I'm gonna get a nice salad bar to uh, strengthen my uh, my muscles for my recovery so today we're grooming horses um, there's a very special way that we groom horses to make sure that we're hearing them and making sure that we're communicating to them. Um, every single solitary one of our horses before coming to the gentle barn was treated like an object and enslaved in a life where they had to behave and do as told. Once they come to the gentle barn, there's lots of things that we do to heal them, like fresh organic hay and clean water and hand walking and playtime with other horses and physical therapy, like we go the gamut to really heal them. But one of the things that we do to heal them is grooming them. Now horses should be groomed every day to maintain cleanliness um, and health of the body, but grooming also can serve as a healing tool and a communication between horse and person to show them that we hear them, we care about their emotions and their personalities, and that we're talking to them and respecting them as a living being. So today I'm gonna to be doing a training for our staff to make sure that we're all on the same page and grooming the horses in a way that gives them respect uh, and love in the process. Before I do anything with an animal, because, okay, Picture for a moment, let's say, God forbid, your arms were broken and I had to go and brush your hair. I wouldn't just go to you and start brushing. I would say, I'm gonna brush your hair now, are you ready? I'm gonna let you know what I'm doing, right? 
So it's the same with animals. I want to make sure that they know what I'm doing and I'm not just going, treating them like a thing. So um, Sasha, I'm going to put your halter on. So I'm just going to tell her and I'm going to show her what I'm doing. And I'm going to put it on. Thank you for helping me. Sasha, I'm going to start with the curry comb. So I'm going to show her what I'm doing. I'm going to tell her what I'm doing, right? So she sees what instrument I'm using and she knows what I'm doing. I'm going to start at the top of the neck and I'm going to start working my way down slowly, but I'm going to be looking at her face the whole time. So I'm going to stay right here. My hands are not going to move on. I'm going to stay right here until she gets this itch worked out. Okay. She seems to be satisfied, so I'm going to move on. And then she found another spot, so I'm going to stay right here for a minute. This is pleasure in a horse, right? I know you guys know this. This is her going, yes, yes, right there, scratch harder. So I'm scratching harder, and I'm going to stay right in this spot. Okay, she seems to be a little done, so I'm gonna move down to her withers. I found another spot, so now I'm gonna stay here for a minute. Then we're the only people in their lives that are actually listening, and it heals their past. It heals their abuse, it heals their neglect, it heals all the years of them being treated like they had no feelings, like they were a thing and it sets them free, and it allows them to feel respected and loved and cherished at the gentle barn, and that's what we want. When we're done with the curry comb, now we're gonna move to the hard bristle brush. And this is just to get all of the dead hair and the dirt off of the body. So this is no longer a conversation, this is me cleaning her. So I'm gonna brush you, I'm gonna show her what I'm using, and I'm gonna tell her what I'm doing. And then I start at the top of the neck and I just brush. Now we're gonna move on to mane and tail. I like to use um, conditioner on their mane and tail because it makes it much easier to brush. So again, I'm gonna show her what I'm doing and I'm gonna show her what I'm using. I'm gonna spray your mane, okay? So there's the hoof pick. I'm gonna pick your hooves. I show her what I'm using. I tell her what I'm doing. I'm gonna pick your hooves. When horses are not hoof picked daily, poop, mud, and debris get stuck in those grooves and it can turn into fungus and really severe hoof problems. The final step in the grooming process is a washcloth for the face. So again, I'm gonna tell her what I'm doing and I'm gonna show her. I'm gonna wipe your face, my love. All right, I'm gonna start on her eyes. Some of the horses hate it and some of the horses really love it. So I'm gonna do your nose. Lick and chew means she feels good about it. And we're done. Not listening to them at all is not okay. Listening to them all day long, you can't get any other work done. So you have to find the balance where with each horse, you're using the curry comb as a conversation and then the rest is cleaning them. And if you can do that a little bit each day with each horse, you will have much more cooperative horses. You'll have horses that are much happier and healed and you'll be able to bond with them also. So you're spending a little bit of time bonding with them, loving them, talking with them, and then you'll feel really good too. Okay, you guys? Thank you. All right, Sasha, I'm gonna take your halter off, baby. Thank you very, very much. You are a wonderful teacher, thank you. So I'm here with Chandler. Chandler has actually been visiting the gentle barn since he was a boy and he's kind of grown up in our barnyard. And now he's 17 years old and he's an Eagle Scout. And for his Eagle Scout project, he had to do a project somewhere where he kind of left his mark in the world. And he chose to do it at the Gentle Barn. I'm building a new chicken ladder, six new chicken nesting boxes, and a new chicken house. And it, it's perfect timing actually, because we just rescued five chickens from a slaughterhouse. And uh, they're starting the integration process with all the other birds. So it's gonna be perfect for them to move into a brand new, shiny, clean, wonderful house to welcome them home. And I was thinking that maybe you could help us name them. Really? Yeah. Oh, I would love to. That'd be so. amazing. Really, we can't do what we do without the help of people like Chandler, you know? And it's so sweet how like he visited as a kid and he grew up in our barnyard. Mm -hmm. And then now he's doing this amazing project and coming to give back. So usually when I feed the 
our chicken, our bird, our dogs, and our cats. Um, actually, everybody else is sleeping, and so I do it in the quiet of the house, and it's kind of like my space in the morning. But this morning, uh, my daughter woke up early, and so I'm gonna have her film all our feeding stuff so you can kind of see like how we feed the dogs um, and everybody else. So Peggy is eating on her little wheelchair. Um, Peggy was born with only one usable leg. So we're doing things like acupuncture and exercise in the yard and physical therapy to keep her hopping. And most of the time she spends on a dog bed, very comfortable. But while she eats, we have her propped up in her wheelchair so that she can have easy access to her food and water. She doesn't have to struggle to stand or fall over and it just keeps her upright and very, very comfortable. So while she's eating breakfast, now I'm gonna feed breakfast to Zazu. So I have a nice clean tray for her and let's go put it back. Good morning, Zazu. Good morning. Good morning, pretty girl. Good morning, Zazu. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. You have to make sure that her house is always clean, that her food and water is always fresh, and that she has plenty of toys to play with in her house. So, of course, she gets clean, fresh water every day, filtered. So this is what we drink, this is what our animals drink. There you go, sweetheart, here's your water. And now let's get her food. Whoa. <laughs> Things falling. Is that a potato? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, we feed Zazu cooked food in the morning. I've got lentils and beans and seeds sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds. I've got some veggies mixed in here and some fruit. And then give her a nice big spoonful. I always make sure that she has plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables every day. Here's your breakfast, darling. And she's got plenty of toys to play with, lots to do. Hi. Hi, Zazu. Jump, jump, jump. Hi, Zazu, jump. Oh, you're very beautiful. Hi, Sasu, jump, jump, <laughs> jump. It's so fun waking her up in the morning because she's always in a good mood and we sing songs together and she jumps around and she welcomes the day and she always puts me in a great mood. Hi, jump, jump, jump. <laughs> Enjoy your breakfast. I'm gonna go feed the dogs. A lot of people knowing that we're vegan ask what our dogs eat. So I mix it all up in a big crock pot and I keep it in the fridge. So this is basically quinoa, lentils, beans, uh, let's see, chopped celery, chopped carrots, chopped sweet potatoes. And I keep it in the fridge and then I just keep serving them from here until it's done and then I make a new batch. I'm gonna give her three. Uh, this is for socks. She's 15 years old. She plays like a puppy. She has more energy than any of us. And uh, she's about 55 pounds, so I'm gonna give her three nice scoops. All right, I'm gonna have to make a new batch. Dogs suffer from food allergies, just like some of us do. And so um, we get a lot of calls and emails from people around the world saying that their dogs have hot spots, itchy spots, are losing their hair, and are having flaky, dry, itchy skin. And um, the first thing I tell them is it's probably due to diet, and you got to get them tested. So we have a place at our veterinarian here in Sherman Oaks that has a saliva test. Um, it's just like a little rope, you put it in their mouth, get some saliva, put it in a glass vial, send it off to the lab, and they'll test the saliva to what they're allergic to. My dog Lakota had raging ear infections, was constantly itchy, scratching, crying out because it hurt so bad, losing hair, and getting hot spots. So we had him tested for allergies, and sure enough, he was allergic to um, lentils and beans. And so this lentil and bean concoction that I feed the other three dogs I can't feed to Lakota. So for Lakota who's allergic to lentils, I feed him quinoa, which is really high in protein, sweet potato and veggies, and 
this nature's recipe vegan dog food. It's basically made out of soy. <coughs> Is that good, Sax? Good boy, Bingo. We are gonna start heading out to Rescue Con soon. But before we get going, I'm gonna meditate. Meditation quiets the mind, focuses the mind, connects you with who you really are. I believe that we're spiritual beings in a physical form that have come here to do great things and cause great expansion in the world. So we can get lost and busy in our physical world, focusing on whether we're male or female, focusing on whether we're a parent or if we're married or if we're single, focusing on all the human earthly details of, of our lives, our pasts, our presence and our futures. And sometimes we forget that spiritual truth about us. And meditation allows me to remember that. Also, one of the things that I practice is visioning. So every day for five minutes, I vision a peaceful world where forests are so rich and fruitful that they touch the sky, that our water sources are so clean and pure that clean rivers flow into thriving oceans with thriving marine life, rich creatures all around us living in harmony with us as our neighbors and as our friends. I envision people holding chickens, hugging cows, smiling at one another and looking into our eyes, community, friends, family, having peace on this planet. And then for the rest of the day, that stays with me. And all the conversations that I have, the thoughts that I have, the work that I do, the hearts that I open, the kids that I work with, and the animals that I heal are born and generated from that vision of peace and promise and hope. And then after meditation, it's puppy cuddle time. <laughs> so we're in the car and we're on our way to Rescue Con. It's a convention for rescuers, animal rescuers, and we're really excited to be there. Um, I'm the keynote speaker and I'm gonna share a lot of stories with people and Jay's speaking as well. Um, so I'm super excited to hear him talk about animal rescue preparedness, disaster preparedness for animals. It's gonna be a great convention with lots of other really great speakers and our daughter Cheyenne and our dog Little One is coming with us. Well, they just put you up too. I took this picture about 10 minutes ago when you were there. <laughs> Hello, Cheyenne. Hello. 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 So we're having a really good time at uh, RescueCon, learning a lot, meeting a lot of people. Um, the booth's been doing really great. Ellie did great in her talk. And, um, you know, we're just kind of um, got about another hour or so, and then we're going to go try and find some food. Anyway, uh, it's a great event. What I, what I loved about that event was that it was like we were there very supportive for each other, and like I... I was able to do your live feed and you did my live feed and and then um, there were people who were just equally excited to see both of us and we got to really share the time together and um, you know we we had Cheyenne and we had little one with us and you know people wanted to come up and talk to us at our booth and it just felt very friendly and very warm and very positive energy and I really like that event. Yeah, it was I liked really, it too. Really nice. You liked it too. I liked it too. The audience seemed so receptive and warm and engaged and interactive. People were asking questions and crying when we showed the videos. Um, and Jay, your talk was great. I really, really liked it. I really liked that. I'm looking forward to you doing that talk more often. How is it for you? Are you talking to me? Yeah. It was good. Um, I'm tired, so I kind of want to sleep. <laughs> you ready but, to get to the hotel? Yeah, but um, you Will you guys go did go great. for some go for some soup plantation first. <laughs> and little one did really good. Yeah. Oh, so overall, Rescue Con was a successful event. Yeah, it really nice. was. Nice. And now we're going to Soup Plantation because we are <laughs> starving. <laughs> it's our home away from home. I am ready, ready, ready 
for some soup plantation. I am going to eat it up, bunch of salads, bunch of soup. <laughs> what you eating? I'm eating lots of food because I am friggin' starving. So you got a beautiful salad. Sweet potato, <laughs> potato. Um, this is a tabbouleh with um, uh, quinoa and just regular quinoa and obviously you can see edamame and beets and lots of different wonderful fruit um, salad stuff. Very, Such beautiful very colors. Yummy. Hey Cheyenne. Look, let me show you Look something. at all this healthy food. Let me show you something. Watch this. Yeah. This is my salad. So this is what we're supposed to be eating, you guys. We're supposed to be eating rainbows. We're supposed to be eating fresh fruits and vegetables, nuts and grains of every color in the rainbow. How nutritious that looks. And when I'm done with my salad, we got some vegan minestrone soup, and we got sweet potatoes and regular potatoes. Ah, I'm gonna put my phone down and start eating. Off to a book signing. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning. RescueCon was so fun yesterday. And today I can't wait to sign books and talk to people about the Gentle Barn and sell merch at our booth. It's gonna be another really great day. You guys were at a really cool hotel that we got to stay at last night. Waking up at the beach is just wonderful. So we, uh, we just grabbed a little bit of breakfast um, and uh, can always find something to eat. We had fruit salad and oatmeal. <laughs> um, and we're heading out to the car to head over to the book signing over at Bungalow 21. And uh, we'll see you over there. Escape from reality Open your eyes Look up to the skies on our online store. So if anything looks good to you, come shopping at gentlebarn.org. So I'm with Charlie and I'm Raymond from Charlie Nunn Photography. Uh, they're part of the Bungalow 21 event today and have been so kind and generous to donate some of their proceeds from the work that they do uh, to the Gentle Barn, especially if people are booking today. This is the guy that really started the whole thing. Um, we had a, his name is Simba, and he's very photogenic, but when we had photographs taken of him, they were horrible. So we, um, uh, we, ha we decided to do them ourselves. And our business kind of grew organically out of that. Um, we took photographs of our own dogs, and then um, we started taking photographs of friend dogs. Um, and we knew from the very beginning that it's always very important for us to give back, to give back to like, organizations like yours. Um, so um, we have a very, very simple um, look. Uh, it's very uh, um, uh, clean, 
simple backdrop, great lighting, and we do everything um, we can to capture a cat or dog or, or tortoise. Yeah. It's personality. Personal. This tortoise is 90 years old. This is his best friend. Oh, um, this is yeah. his 17th best friend because cats don't live nearly as long as tortoises. And I love um, the name of it. Sandy. The name of oh, it yeah. is You're Cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you can find out more information about them. Uh, where? Tell them where. Um, on our Instagram at Charlie Nunn Photography. Thank you so much for supporting the Gentle Barn, and, yeah. and uh, we'd love to have you come out and take yeah, some yeah, photos will. of the yeah, animals, and right. yeah, that'd be really fun. All right. All right, well, thank you, and have a great thank rest you. of the event. All right, All right, cool. When we went, the minute I got to touch a cow, I, this was my, this was before Thanksgiving, and the turkey, I stopped eating all meat. Oh, just being able to hold a turkey and touch it and look in its eyes. Everything shifted for me. And hugging the cows, and there's a cow, cow karma, mm -hmm. and I got to lay down on karma, and oh, it was just magical. When I met karma, I don't know. I, I, I can't even put it into words. There was just a connection. Oh. This is karma. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. that's so great. Oh, that's so lovely. Have you seen um, Karma's video on our YouTube channel? No, I watch it. It's really powerful. That, and I love the fact that you can spend as much time as you want with, even if I, I felt a pull for one animal, I could just stay with that one animal. And it was magic. It changed everything about the way I think about everything. And that's the honest truth. And reading your book, oh, I sobbed, I laughed. I mean, it's one of those things, you know, I just... You guys are magic. You guys are, are magic. Thank you for doing what you do. Thank you. Absolutely. And I'm just so happy. Oh, I'm so happy to meet you. I really want to get a book, another book for her to read and have you sign it. So who should I make it to? John. J-O-A-N? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It's just such a gift to have met both of you. And I also learned about what um, genetic modification. I had no idea. When I saw those giant animals and they were telling me why they were so giant, I mean, it's amazing. I feel like I'm an educated person, but I felt so uneducated. He's over seven feet tall and 3,000 pounds, and look how gentle he is. He's so loving. They're all He's that way, so, though. so They're gentle. All, and no matter what they've been through in their past, it's like these guys have healed them where they want to be around other people. Where's Cheyenne? Cheyenne is in the puppy pen, of course. Where else would my daughter be? Thanks for hanging with us this week, episode number two. Next week, we're going to the Gentle Bar, Missouri, and we're going to be doing a rescue, so stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and share.